Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for spending time uh, with the committees today. Welcome to the Senate, to the um, public hearing on our on the various bills we have. This is the Committee on Women, Family Relations, Gender Equality, joint with Civil Service and Government Reorganization, Committee on Finance, and Committee on Government, Corporations, and Public Enterprises. We have a number of um, bills that have been filed, and we will... I will not ask you to comment on each one. Uh, what I will do is ask you all to give your position on what, if you work for government, then obviously what is the current benefits that you, uh, the government you represent, the government office you represent is extending, any comments, discussions, studies you've made on changing the current practices, um, and then we'll take it from there. Um, I was told that the representative from the Employer Federation is not going to be present, but they sent us a position paper. Position paper. Is, is, is this it? Okay. They sent us a position paper. And um, my house rule is, please don't read your position papers to me. I can read that on my own later on. Um, to highlight the points you want to make, but let's make it a more interactive discussion. So there are not too many people here, so that's, that already says that we have time for um, uh, more interaction. Uh, SSS, I'm told, is on the way. GSIS is here. So perhaps let's start with Dole, which, who can give us an overview. Um, and then maybe I'll go to PCW. But if I mix that up, again, we're, there's just a few of us, so everybody will be given time. No? Let, let's just see how it flows. OK? Thank you. Good morning, uh, Honorable Senator Cayetano. Good morning to our colleagues in government and NGOs. Ma'am, Senator, the world, the world of work has closely looked at options and ways of providing uh, women workers with just um, social protection uh, measures, no? given the complexities in in uh, their respective work. So we thank you for the measures, and it's really appreciated by the Department of Labor and Employment. Allow us to state uh, Senator Cayetano our basic position on the matter, or uh, our appreciation at this point. Allow us to present. Uh, existing statutory benefits, uh, maternity benefits in the private sector, ma'am. For example, for a six-day work week, the aggregate um, holidays and paid leaves in the Philippine setting for female workers would am amount to an aggregate of around two 220 days out of the 365 days, if this is six-day work week. While for a five-day work week, female workers now enjoy an aggregate um, holidays and paid leaves in the Philippines um, for 272 or 290 days. And here we are talking of the following items under holidays and paid leaves, holidays, of 26 days, service incentive leave of five, maternity leave from 60 to 78 days, solo parent leave of around seven days, vowsy of 10 days, rest days of 52 days, and under the Magna Carta of Women or gynecological leave, we have around 60 days. So ito ho yung uh, stock taking namin for six day and five day work week. On top of that, we should factor in also public holidays in the Philippines. So that's around um, 15 days. 15 regular holidays and three special days, around eight, 18 days. On top of that, uh, on the average, Madam Senator, we observe that because of uh, climate aberrations like um, Baguio and floods, 
meron nyo tayong around 3 to 4 days per annum of uh, walang pasok. So what we're saying here is ito ho yung situation right now with respect to women uh, of, of childbearing age and therefore we find this already a uh, um, significant already. And the DOLE in its position to balance and facilitate between workers and business, we find the current or the status quo as um, reasonable, reasonable enough. Uh, if we wish to balance, for example, productivity and uh, man hours and the viability of business as well as protecting female workers. Also, ma'am, we are also taking into account small businesses. Small businesses meaning small, medium, and micro businesses may have difficulty adapting or paying for the equivalent increase in terms of the SSS premium. Um, we are also looking at possibilities or implications of increasing maternity leave benefits in terms of hiring of women in the job market. Uh, this is, of course, under study, and therefore, we are just cautious or prudent to take a look at the possible implications. We also wish to um, uh, perhaps underscore that we have a mechanism right now called the TIPC, or the Tripartite Industry and Productivity Councils. This was mandated by law last year, and therefore, we'd like to make use of the tripartite industry consultation process, ma'am, to further vet the five bills. We will do it with expediency, with uh, a sense of urgency, so we can forge certain consensus at this level of mechanism. Thank you very much, ma'am. What was the last thing? Sorry. Uh, the what TIPC, ma'am. Yeah, what is that? The tripartite industry um, and productivity councils. Or so you're saying you're going to take it up with them? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is a mechanism mandated by law last year uh, under the 15th Congress where the labor groups and the employers groups sit down with government and uh, as part of our mandate, we review legislative measures. Okay. So we have already, in fact, written to the TIPC to calendar to agenda the five bills, ma'am. Okay. Well, before we proceed, let me acknowledge the presence of Senator Bam Aquino, who I know will be um, um, happy to participate because he actually has a wife and a baby. That's and right. And I will be asking him very specific questions to, <laughs> to add to the, uh, to, to the richness of our discussion. How many months, uh, if we may start the interview? <laughs> actually, um, thank you, Senator. And I, of course, I'm here, aside from providing the quorum requirement, is... Uh, of course, to throw my support um, with these bills. Uh, of course, we'd love to hear what uh, Dolly has to say as well on these issues, and uh, we'll be watching out for that. My wife just actually went back to work, no? So mm -hmm. the 60 days, I have to say, is really a little short. Yeah. And I know so that we're short. It's been 60 days? I was going to say, what? Yes, I, I did my, uh, one month. I, I, in my mind, it's been a month. It's uh, been 60 days. My new baby, well, my only baby, actually, first one, came out December 25. So we're entering our third month. So, um, my wife has actually been back at work already for almost a month. Okay. So, I know it's quite quick and um, if I'm not mistaken, in the rest of the world, it's uh, other countries have longer lengths of maternity leave. No? So, yeah. maybe we can also look at the international standards. But, of course, balancing the, the concerns of our, um, uh, of our uh, private sector as well. So, um, unfortunately, uh, Senator, I'll be leaving, but uh, I will be watching out for this, okay. maybe in time for our second baby. No? Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I actually already have some comments no, based on uh, what you've said, ASEC, but maybe I'll ask a few more of the uh, um, other speakers to say their piece before I actually... Um, give my reaction to some of the statements that you've made. So maybe I will ask now, so I think PCW can also present the other side. Senator Bam already gave us a, a quick um, insight on what it's like to be a new parent and what it feels like to have to go back to work at 60 days. To the, 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 short of, the long and short of it is it's too short. 
So let's hear from Ms. Mildred Corral Good of morning. the uh, PCW. Good morning, Honorable Senator, and to everyone here. Uh, first of all, our Chair, Riken and Executive Director Versosa expressed their York. regrets for not joining us here today because of the event UN. we are having right now. The are in the UN? Are they still in the UN? No, no ma'am. Ah. The Women in Leadership Decision Making in the Bureau Bureaucracy Forum held in PASIC right now. Um, allow me to share some points on our position on this maternity leave. Okay. Yes. Um, first, the PCW would like to commend the honorable senators for coming up this measure. And as the oversight and coordinating body on women and gender equality concerns, the PCW would like to submit these two points. On granting the equal maternity benefits to unmarried female government employees, uh, we support the Senate bills 288, 2083, and 2710, granting the same maternity leave benefits to government and the private sector. And with regard to increasing the maternity leave benefit to 90 or 120 days as espoused in the Senate bills 2083, 2084, 2661, and 2710, the PCW also supports the increase of the period of maternity leave benefit to enable women to balance fulfillment of their maternal functions and the performance of their work responsibilities. A longer period of maternity leave will also give women sufficient time to rest, recuperate, and regain their full health. And at the same time, it will also contribute to the promotion of infant and child health by encouraging mothers to, to do breastfeed. And as to the length of maternity leave period, the PCW will still consult our board, NGO Board of Commissioners representing the labor and health as to their issues and concerns on the as to the length, length of maternity, yes, ma'am. So what you're saying is you support the increase in general, yes, but as to the actual recommendation, you, you will have length, more have consultation. Consult, yes, okay. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Now let's go to GSIS no? and um, hear what you have to say. Yeah. Thank you and good morning, Madam Your Honor. Uh, for GSIS, uh, as far as uh, as far as government employees uh, are concerned, the, the current law governing uh, maternity leaves is uh, the omnibus rules uh, of uh, Executive 292, no? which I think was cited in uh, Senate Bill 2710, which provides for a maternity leave of up to 60 days. We pay. This is a form of uh, maternity, uh, non-monetary benefit. And uh, in so far as the Senate bills, uh, various Senate bills under consideration of increasing and expanding the number of days to more or less than 120 days, uh, various variations, some of them extension, 90 days, and another 30 days extension, but all in all, 120 bills. GSS fully support the the expanded uh, maternity benefits. Uh, this is also in line with the women empowerment, uh, several laws now, so all the parent acts. And of course, the ILO, ILO standard, which is, I think, uh, 14 weeks. Uh, however, in, uh, in Senate Bill 2083, which I, I think is, uh, more or less wanted to copy the maternity benefits as provided under SSS law. Um, because this is a different scheme under SSS for private employee. I think they are more of a, uh, to be advanced, maternity benefits to be advanced by the employer ben and then reimbursed by SSS. Uh, currently, I think for the government employees, it is more liberal. There's no reimbursement, but this is a form of non-monetary benefits in the sense that for the 60 days that you have been not reporting to work, then you will receive the full pay, mm -hmm. regardless of, uh, because under SSS, I understand, although SSS is not represented here, the reimbursement is up to a certain amount, uh, I think 30 yes. days. So we, your, your we would- Your GSIS is actually simpler and yes. more liberal, and I'm yes. not gonna touch it yes, yes, in yes. that sense. And, 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 so. Uh, we, we, we would suggest that I think the, the, the bill filed by the Honorable Chair 2710 be adopted because number one, it is more precise 
the terminology, I think the other bills are also suggesting that the we should cover unmarried and unmarried, which is, I think, covered by the 2710. And it is more precise that all pregnant female employee married and unmarried. So we propose that uh, terminology. Um, as far as uh, then if if the maternity benefits of the SSS, if the maternity benefits of the SSS will not be followed, then uh, we don't have any more comments uh, yes. because no. there will okay. be no there will be yeah. no problem as far as funding is concerned. Thank you. Well, that's the reason why I bo I, I normally don't bother to sign to file my own. Um, version, my own bill, when there are already bills pending in the committee that I'm going to hear. But our experience is the um, resource person's comment on all the bills, and I found that there was a lot of confusion in the existing bills because the, they, the, uh, the bills did not take into consideration the different um, structures no, between SAS and GSIS. And even I have further questions. Even my, I, I don't claim that my bill is perfect, but I tried to recognize the differences, and then I still have questions to, to in the final version to try to improve it. So definitely your point is well noted because we noticed that as well. Yeah. Thank you. So um, just for the record, because you simplify my job, um, GSIS has the ability, because you said you do not interpose any objections on the proposed increase. So GSIS is capable of funding um, an extended, well, actually, the way I look at it is you have the funds to pay for an employee, whether she's a female or a male, for 12 months, correct? So all you're doing is funding, continuing to give her the salary despite her being, her not being present because of her maternity leave. Depending on the job, um, I, I run a business, I, of course, manage my own Senate office, so I understand that depending on the job, there may or may not be a necessity to bring in an extra person. So there may be additional costs, but sometimes there are no additional costs. It's de again, depending on the, the type of job that that person does. Um, so that's my question, um, Attorney Yu. Ma'am, uh, for government employees, actually, um, it's the agency who, who will pay the regular salary. I mean to say, uh, because a maternity when, when you avail of the maternity leave, you don't have any work, so they will just continue to pay. In that sense, that, that's the benefit. Ah, okay, so, yeah. so in that sense, yeah, you're right. GSIS does not advance anything. Yes, no? They just yes. continue to yes. pay. Yeah. And, and the basis is, I think, the omnibus rules on leaves, which is, has been there in yes. the, for government. So, but for my, for my education, um, when does GSIS step in in terms of benefits? Are there any benefits monetary benefits that GSIS provides while the employee is working. Let's not talk about retirement, no? Just while working. Meron ba anything in terms of um, kung may sakit or any, anything, anything, just so I can see what you understand better what you do. Well, uh, currently we have disability benefits in case, uh, okay. in case of so, accident. So, okay, in that sense, if um, an employee is disabled, who pays? Not the agency, but GSIS. Yes, Tama. we have benefits, corresponding benefits. Okay, so GSIS. that's where GSIS comes in. Yes, ma'am. So the, the agency will withhold the salary and GSIS comes in, or you, how does it work? You want to it's consult because you're, you have some assistants who are saying, trying to say some things. May, may I or not? Yes, Perfect. of course. Yes, are you ready? Your Honor, uh, as far as disability benefits uh, by the GSIS, uh, 
the salary has never been an issue and uh, there will be no deduction from the salary. This is part of the regular benefit. And the time to comment is precisely because you're commenting on many different versions, no? So rest assured that the objective after this hearing is to consolidate it. I, I wish, um, we, we did not expect you to comment in each one, but that's why I rather have a free-flowing discussion because you, um, and, and that is why I also will, will take the time to put on record now that I regret that um, the, the um, Employer Confederation of the Philippines did not bother to attend because it is really our objective to have a meaningful discussion to address the concerns that they have. Yes, I appreciate that Dolly, of course, is here and you will have to speak on their behalf. Um, but it is their lookout, no? Um, I don't think it is, and I will say this, I don't think it is responsible for um, an association of this, of that level to just send in a position paper and comment because they do not get the benefit of the discussion. That means they don't bother to hear the concerns that the committee has and uh, um, PCW is here, international agencies are here to look at it. And that is very disturbing to me, no? Because this is a very um, um, prestigious uh, organization representing employees, employers. And I am offended that on the occasion of Women's Month, they cannot even grace us with the presence of a representative to at least hear, hear out the concerns of women and families. Um, Senator Bam is not a woman. He is a partner of a woman who went through the process of childbirth and, as he said, had to go back in a period which he felt was too soon. So I, I do regret that um, important, important stakeholders in this uh, um, so uh, let me call on Ms. Lotta Silwander, representing UNICEF. Thank you very much, Senator, and thanks for inviting us to, to come to the hearing. Um, I would like to take the child's perspective on okay. why, Wonderful. Uh, why, why maternity leave, because it, that's really why a mother needs to go on maternity. It's because of the, of the baby. And um, there are several issues here. The Philippines has a very low breastfeeding rate not the lowest in the region, but, but low. Still low. Yeah, around 34% of women uh, breastfeed for six months. Uh, and on top of that, the Philippines has a very high rate of stunting, which means children are malnourished for a very long period during their very young years. That usually starts even in the womb, but more usually with the lack of breastfeeding and the introduction instead of formulas and so on. Um, and of course, that stunting could, uh, we believe, uh, probably be changed by more women being aware and understanding and being able to breastfeed exclusively for the first six months without introducing anything else to the baby. So um, from a, a UNICEF perspective, but also from a WHO perspective, we would actually go higher than any of the bills suggest here and go for six months. Uh, in this region, there is one country, Vietnam, that has passed a, a legislation that allows for six months paid maternity leave. Uh, across, the across the board, private, sec yeah, 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 even informal sector has been provided with that. So, um, even informal sector. Yes. So it's in, in Vietnam, it's the pension and social security fund that pays for the maternity leave. Um, it was felt when the discussions and the debates in Vietnam at that time were going about that if it was up to the employers, uh, it wouldn't happen or it would be a long battle to actually ensure that women were getting six months maternity leave. And if, if, if there isn't six months maternity leave and women still are supposed to breastfeed for six months, we must ensure that factories, workplaces and so on have breastfeeding rooms like you have here in the Senate <laughs> uh, and, and other facilities that actually will facilitate that kind of, of, of breastfeeding. Um, and also that they're allowed to take time off during the workday and so on. That's not happening in the Philippines yet. So there are many hurdles for this, for the six months breastfeeding to actually happen, even if there's four months maternity leave. 
Um, so from WHO and UNICEF, I can, I can say that we would prefer a six months maternity leave as that would ensure the proper nutrition of the child from the beginning of their life. Thank you very much. ILO. Good morning, Madam Senator. Um, I'm here representing my director, Jeff Johnson, and uh, for us, our main um, our main piece of con to, to contribute to this discussion is uh, on ILO Convention 183 on maternity protection, and uh, we noted that your bill, in particular, actually takes into consideration already the provisions of Convention 183, which um, calls for a period of maternity leave of not less than 14 weeks. And sorry to say that it's actually less than what our UN, <laughs> UN family is actually esp espousing now, but that's something that has been um, discussed at the, you know, ILO is tripartite, so it has been discussed among the tripartite members of the organization. So at the moment we are, the convention is asking for maternity leave of not less than 14 weeks. And this includes a period of six weeks of compulsory leave after childbirth. Um, and likewise, um, the convention also calls for cash benefits that women uh, who give birth are entitled to, and this benefit shall not be less than two-thirds of the women's previous earnings. So previous earnings could take on different definitions depending of, um, of the country's situation. Um, there's also discussion on t as to who pays, but it's also something that's left to the, the country to determine. So it could be like exclusively by employers or through, as in the case of Vietnam, or, or a mix, uh, or through also the social insurance fund. So I think in the Philippines right now, it's, it's, it's a mix. Employers also contribute to the social insurance fund for, for mater maternity leave benefits of, of the women employees. Um, Madam Senator, at the moment the country has not ratified Convention 183, but uh, suffice it to say that it is the uh, international standard at the moment that's um, being observed by the different member countries of, of the ILO. And while certain um, standards have been set, some countries actually, even if they have not ratified, have actually gone beyond. Of the provisions of and of, of, of this convention, and I can share with you a study of, of different countries uh, globally, of, of, of how um, they provide maternity leave benefits and how the cash benefits are actually paid out. That's I, I can give that to the secretariat. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe as an additional information, also um, the ILO together with our UN. Um, family is working now with the Department of Labor and Employment as well as NEDA and some government agencies um, in the process uh, which is called assessment-based national dialogue which is uh, aiming to establish a social protection floor for the country and uh, one of the condition the conditionalities that is actually included there is on a for, for women as well as for children. And so we can actually look at that process as looking into the gaps if, 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 if we need to do some costings in terms of the maternity benefits right now. So um, that's, uh, I just would, would like to, to, to raise that ongoing process wherein as, uh, we're now having uh, discussions at the Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao level, and maybe at the national level, we'll have something by uh, the, the current quarter. So, but it's something that uh, it's looking into the different um, social protection um, programs of, of the government at the moment, including SSS, GSIS, as well as uh, PhilHealth, et cetera. Um, but that's an ongoing process, and then th that's probably something that we can contribute to this, the, uh, any ongoing discussion later on, uh, on, on this, um, on this bills that are we are we are now discussing. Okay. And again, later on, I'll call on you to share more details. No, but let, let's just let everyone give everyone a chance to speak. Um, 
I'd like to hear now from SSS. Uh, would it be Mr. Ongkiko who will speak? Okay. Good morning, uh, Madam Senator. Uh, for, for the SSS as a backdrop, we're currently performing the 2013 actuarial valuation. It, it's, uh, it's meant to project benefits and contributions in the future and to determine the life of the fund, uh, as well as to determine the liabilities that it needs to book. Um, in the last valuation, 2011, the fund is targeted to last under the real realistic scenario of 2042. So uh, given that, um, we're also, uh, the funding ratio is uh, about 40%. So meaning um, contributions, future contributions will not really suffice for all future benefits, uh, given that the uh, SSS contribution rate is at uh, a mere 11% as compared to um, other countries' uh, contribution rate with a minimum of about 20 to 24%. So given that scenario, we, 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 we know the, uh, the intent of the bills for the maternity to increase in the benefits, but uh, considering the current situation of SSS, um, it's underfunded and life will only last 2042. We hope that if ever the bill will be uh, considered, there's a matching increase in contribution as well. Mm -hmm. So that goes beyond my... Um jurisdiction no because on the uh, SSS on any amendments to SSS including uh, um, funding that would go to the a different uh, Senate committee my only concern for now is the maternity and um, what I don't know is if there are carved out maternity and this is where I don't mind asking our um, representatives if any of you are familiar with any kind of additional contribution by women for purposes of um, funding maternity benefits? Is there such a thing? It's usually equal, right? Yeah, so okay, so that, well, I mean, and I know you meant in general, no benefits in general, but I was just wanted to check if there was any such thing. Um, and currently, my understanding is the, um, the, Law which states under, um, I'm looking at um, RA1161 on SSS, it states that the SSS shall immediately reimburse the employer of 100% of the amount of maternity benefits advanced to the employee by the employer. And my understanding is that is computed at a ceiling of 16,000 pesos a month, correct? Yes, madam, the average monthly salary credit is maxed at 60000 Can you explain that to me? I mean, I don't understand because I'm a lawyer and I am trained to read the words or the sentences as simply as it is written. And so when I read 100% of the amount of maternity benefits advanced to the employee, then I assure... This, this tells me that, number one, there was an advance made by the employer. And number two, the requirement is for SSS to reimburse 100% of that amount that was advanced. So I don't know what that amount is, but I'm assuming that it would be the full salary. But that's why when I asked my staff to check what does that mean, I'm told that there's a cap and that cap is 16,000. So how did this come about? How, how did this, and before it was 15, so it went up. How, did, how was this amount determined? Because that is above minimum wage, so at least I know we cover, so minimum wage earners and those earning a little bit more. So first question, they would then effectively receive 100% of their salary. And my second question is, therefore those who are earning more than 16,000 will only get reimbursed 16,000, is that correct? So those two questions. Uh, Madam Senator, just, just to give a backdrop, for SS contribution rate of 11%, it's applied to the salary uh, of the individual member, uh, but the salary is capped at 16,000. So for example, if the salary of the uh, member is, say, 50,000, the 11% will only be applied to the 16,000. There's a cap by law. Um, we've been trying to increase by, by law, yes, Madam. There's a, a provision, Madam, in the uh, in the Republic of 8282, and it has, uh, we have consistently requested to um, increase that limit. Uh, uh, 
that's section 18, madam. Section 18. In in section 18, madam, there's a a schedule of uh, table wherein the contributions are. I mean the the compensation has a has a matching salary credit. In in that uh, 1997 law, the maximum was up, was only about at 9,000. So SSS has been uh, steadily pushing for um, increase in the monthly salary credit. In 2013, it was still at 15,000. But beginning January 1, 2014, SSS has uh, uh, was lobbied to increase that to 16,000. So now it's at 16,000. By Congress, by, by President. Because, because um, it says here that um, the minimum and maximum monthly salary credits, as well as the rate of contributions, may be fixed from time to time by the Commission through rules and regulations. So, you don't need a law, subject to the approval of the President. So when you say you've been pushing it, I'll be happy to push it with you. That's why I ask by law or where, because I need to know who's going to make this decision. Madam Chair, let me for briefly come for, for, for a moment. Sure. Uh, Madam Chair, um, although the the schedule is written in the in the law, there's a provision to if there will be increases that the office of the president, uh, office of the president's approval is required. So in uh, 2013, SSS uh, requested for an increase from 15 to 16 thousand. It was approved by the office of the of the president. Mm -hmm. it, and is that as far as, as you have requested? Do you have any more pending as of now? Because you said that's 2013. Um, actually, Madam, in the, the uh, in the actuarial evaluation, we have been pushing for a long time to increase it further, but we understand that there uh, it's a SSS is a tripartite uh, is governed by tripartite body, so we need employers and employees, uh, both of which, at least in my understanding, uh, have resistance as to increasing the the maximum salary credit just because the 11 percent contribution rate will be applied to that maximum for those employees who are earning about 16000 When you say just because that 11% will be applied, meaning to say um, you've already reached the limit of what that 11% can absorb? Is that um, what you mean? So for example, Madam, if the salary of the person is 50000 mm. uh, the 11% contribution rate will only be applied to 16000 Correct. That's now, what you said. If if uh, if the limit were say for the safe argument were to be increased to twenty thousand, that eleven percent will effectively be applied to the twenty thousand, which should be additional cost uh, to the employer and employee. The well, that's why that's so. That's what I said because as of now, the eleven percent contribution is already fully utilized, and to inc to ask for more, you're saying there there won't be enough funding for that. Um, actually, Madam, the 11 percent at the current benefit structure yes. and current contribution structure, current uh, monthly salary credit, even the maximum 16,000, is really insufficient. It's 11 percent. If I may compare that, for example, with uh, the average of uh, Asian countries, the Asian countries is about 20 to 24 percent. So in terms of uh, uh, contribution rate, we're roughly half of what is on the average in Asia. And just to add, Madam, uh, Madam Senator, uh, if we compare it, for example, with our GSIS colleagues, their contribution rate is at 21%. Yeah. Um, ours is at 11, 11%. That's why... Um, when you say contribution at 11, are you talking about government or combined then? Combined na po, Madam. Combined, okay. Yeah, can you give me a position paper on that? As I said, it goes beyond my yes, 
my um, the scope of my um, hearing right now, but I'd be interested because there are other benefits that um, I'm concerned with, and uh, that's basically the position that you're going to keep on repeating. Eh? So, can I ha have a position paper, uh, particularly a comparison with other countries, as you were saying, especially in the region? Yes, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's go into more details of on this. No, everybody has spoken. Yes, I didn't miss out on anyone. Okay, we just to put on record. Also, we got a um, position paper from Civil Service Commission, basically um, supporting the increase. Um, there's more details, but for those who would like a copy, you can just ask the Secretariat. As I said, I'll have to consolidate this because, um, like many of you have done, there, they are specific comments on existing bills. Um, I, I usually am very clear on, the, the, on any position I have, uh, if I have any, on the bills that I hear because I do um, try to have an open mind and listen to the different views regardless if they are contrary to mine. Um, so generally my position is I support an increase, that is why I filed my bill. But um, I am also very cognizant of the quote unquote absorptive capacity of business. Um, in civil services here, hello, welcome, um, Mr. Rivera. So yeah, I'll give you a few minutes to settle down um, and then I'll give you the floor. Um, so as I was saying, um, I'm cognizant of the absorptive capacity and uh, concerns of the business sector. However, um, I must put on record that based on my um, involvement in women's issues in the last 10 years and the studies I've made, the experts who I have listened to, um, that will always be a given. Um, the employer section, will, the employers will always um, be resistant normally to um, added burdens on their part, of course. It's a uh, survival mechanism. Um, and so the change must, it would usually come from the advocates. That is quite common. Um, once in a while it comes from government. That's why it's very interesting to hear about the Vietnam uh, model. Um, I am also, and I'll, I'll give the floor to civil service in a, in a few minutes. Um, let me not put words in your mouth since you're already here to discuss that with us. Uh, so what we will do in the next few minutes after I give the civil service the floor is to have an exchange of the effects no, of uh, such an increase. So um, are you ready, Mr. Rivera? Would you like to give us your position? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, on behalf of the Civil Service Commission, we apologize for being late. I was struck in the traffic. Nonetheless, for our, on our part, we uh, have submitted our position paper, uh, and this uh, was dated March 20, signed by our Acting Chair, uh, Acting Chair um, uh, Martinez. So, um, in our uh, position paper, we discussed about the various bills uh, filed uh, uh, in uh, the Senate uh, for uh, Senate Bill Number 288 and um, 2083. We are proposing that uh, this be uh, uh, this maternity benefits be given to all uh, women in government, not necessarily. The, uh, the uh, permanent and temporary employees uh, because uh, this is to make more the bill or the law inclusive, non-discriminatory and consistent with the conditions for the grant of the seed benefit under existing civil service rules because under our rules, it is given to all women in government regardless of status or uh, uh, civil status or employment status. So uh, for uh, Senate Bill number 2083, uh, since this, uh, uh, this concerns the private sector, we, we defer not, uh, we, we uh, are not uh, providing any comment. Uh, but with respect to Senate Bill number 2710, as regards the proposed increase in maternity leave period to 90 days, uh, and uh, granting an option to extend for additional 30 days without pay uh, 
Well, uh, we see that this be uh, applied to all women in government, regardless of status of appointment or civil status. And uh, we wish to inform also the, the Honorable Chair that uh, in the exercise of our rulemaking functions, function, we have uh, uh, promulgated various issuances relating to women in government, and this includes the maternity leave. So, uh, on our part, while we are, uh, while we support any measurement to promote the well-being of women, except this in the government service, we uh, suggest that this uh, uh, that this additional period uh, be uh, studied further by GSIS and DBM because it has cost implication, and. Uh, it must be noted that under our existing civil service rules and regulations, we have provided a number of uh, uh, leave benefits apart from maternity. And uh, this include uh, the uh, uh, 15 days sick leave, uh, 15 days vacation leave, special leave privileges, three days po yun. And then we have re rehabilitation leave, study leave, and also, uh, two months special leave provided under the Magna Carta. But these are subject to certain conditions. Uh, with, respect, uh, with respect to the additional 30 days uh, ex uh, option, uh, which is an extension, uh, we, we, we uh, have no problem with that, provided it, it is without pay and it is subject to certain conditions as provided in the bill. Uh, as to the other uh, provisions of Senate Bill number uh, 2710, uh, as regards the non-diminution in benefits and security of tenure, we, we support these provisions, Your Honor. Uh, with respect to Senate Bill number 2661, the, the CSA supports any measure meant to promote the well-being of women, especially in government. However, as explained earlier, pregnant government employee under certain conditions is currently entitled to maternity leave benefits equivalent to 60 days with full pay apart from the leave benefits under appropriate laws and policies that they may enjoy. Moreover, the CEC understands that uh, these additional benefits to employees have cost implications and uh, so we are uh, are suggesting that this be further studied by GSIS and DBM. Thank you very much. By DBM, because we assume that the civil service would have be able to give us an overview. Um, when we speak of the cost implications, now I noted your comment that you would like the civil service uh, would like to get the uh, cost implication from GSIS and DBM. I don't know if GSIS, well, you have, of course, you have your actuarial study. So do you have who, I, I just want to know who in government would have this data easily available. I mean, it's not as if we, we did some calculations when we were discussing the um, Breastfeeding Act and how many women would actually be availing of the breastfeeding room that is mandated under the law now when we were discussing that law. And surprisingly, it's not a lot. I mean, like you look in this room, it's a full room. How many women are visibly pregnant here? So you look, at, you look at the whole floor, how many women are pregnant? I mean, normally you see three pregnant women together and like that's a lot, you know? It's, it's not as if there's even one in 10 pregnant women in an office. So um, in as much as it is your job to, to check on the cost implication, that is the um, responsible thing to do. Um, I'd like to get it done right away because, I, again, from, from what we have done, it wasn't anything major. So if we could um, try to, I don't know, GSIS, could I get an answer from you? Is that something, is that something you would have? Um, can you do a random? So if, if you don't have, I see some head shaking. But anyway, I'll give you the floor in a second. Oh, go ahead. Do, do you have a response to that? I mean. Well, Your Honor, uh, as I stated earlier, currently the, the scheme for government employees is that 
it is to be paid by agency. Yeah. So, so it's, it's a, the agency, no? Uh, so I go back to we, CSC. We, we can, we can, well, what, well, if we will conduct a study, we might need some data from DBM also because it, they, they will be the one who will provide the appropriations. No, 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 but what, what, is it, isn't it so simple to go back to, to go to a few agencies? I can write them myself, but I, I just feel like CSC has a direct relationship with most of these agencies and randomly ask them, survey, how many women have availed of maternity benefits in the last 12 months for the year 2014? How many women in your office? Can we do that? Can you give me that data in a month? I mean, seriously, you know, if I pick up the phone and call the HR of these people, it's not something that's so hard to get. This is not like sick, how many people went on sick leave? How many people uh, were a wall today? Baka marami -rami yon. But maternity leave, it's not hard to trace those people. Can, can we do that? <coughs> Mr. Rivera? Actually, we, we can do that. We can uh, uh, talk with our counterparts at uh, the national or local level, the HRMOs. Yes. Uh, what we're saying here, uh, Madam Chair, is that uh, I, uh, we're, not, we're not against this additional maternity benefit. Yes, I know you need data, but I'm just yes. saying, okay, but let's not, let's not allow this um, data finding to get in the way of getting this passed, because this will pass. It's just a question of how and how soon. In what, in what, at what level will it pass? In other words, what kind of increases are we talking about and how soon? And if you do not feed me the data, it will happen without your data. So let's all be responsible, that's what I'm saying to everyone here, and give me the data that I need to come up with something. Okay. But I mean, you know, po, po, as I said, um, if I were you, you know, go small and big. What would be the, one of the biggest sectors that would be um, affected, affected here with government? I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be the one to tell you, DepEd. Dep Why? Because it's predominantly women. Yes. And we do know that um, they have a very clear, um, clear schedule, no? Um, a calendar, school calendar that would be affected. So I'm not oblivious to the fact that that has an impact on their ability to go to work or they're taking on the leave, but you, we still have to study it and, and get it done. Okay? Yes. Sige, please. I really appreciate it. Let me, um, yes, Mr. Ongeko. Uh, ma Madam Chair, if I may, um, SSS has uh, maternity benefits for a long time, so we've been collecting data. Okay. Uh, we can probably share with the uh, civil service uh, the, the rates that we have. Wonderful. Actually, it's in our actuarial valuation. We can share Sige. it with them. Do, do, but can you offhand tell me, like, is it one in 100 female employees, one in 500? Do you have anything like that? Uh, what we do have is uh, rates per ages. Like, for example, for 30-year-old women, the rate is about 10%. So okay. for 30-year-old women, about one in 10 but for about 40-year-old women, it's 2%. So it gradually decreases. So we have a, a set rate. So, so from 18 to 29? I have to get back to you, madam. Our, uh, our okay. table is more on age-based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. So, you, so what you have is the 30? Uh, for a 30-year-old uh, thirty year old women, it's about... Is that, is that uh, a range? Is that 30 to 39 or is that 30 it's just below? 30 to before 31, just 30. Uh, just 30. 30, so it's about 10%, so about okay. 1 in 10. Yeah, so what we need to know is, um, uh, going back to Dolly also, what mm -hmm. is the makeup of your workforce? Is it roughly 50%, slightly higher on women in the Philippines? Or about 50-50, what is it? Fifth, uh, Madam S Senator, it's 51% versus around 49. Women. Okay. Uh, in favor of uh, women. Women, okay. So if you say 51% of the workforce is women, if we can break that down, and I'm sure you have that also, um, 30 and below, and then 31 to 40, whatever that breakdown is, and if it's roughly 10%, it's not, it's not that difficult to find, to find it, no? I don't, ev I, what I would even hazard to try, what I would love to have is also, I don't know if anyone has it, it's a breakdown in terms of um, the type of work. Because our studies show, this is very public, public information, that the, um, the higher the education, the, uh, the higher, um, I'm looking for the right term, but basically the higher education and uh, the, I don't know if it's correct to say the, the greater the workload or the higher the level of employment, uh, the responsibility, the childbirth rate goes down. So that becomes relevant in your computation as well. 
because we may have very different figures for uh, urban, college, graduate, um, um, what do you call this, BPO or junior managers, even though they're below 30, versus those in the informal sector, uh, you know, very um, low-skilled work. I don't know if we have that, but I'm almost certain you will see a difference because that is what our studies already show us. So, um, but yeah, so we're looking at roughly 10% for the 30-year-old if that's the only thing you have right now. And um, that's not a lot. That's, that's if, you, if you can tell me, would you have at your fingertips the breakdown of the age? Not, not, not right now. Not yet, ma'am, but we'll dig into the disaggregation as you yeah, mentioned. if you uh, could. Madam if you could. Because we'll as that. I said, it's not a lot. It's not going to be a lot, no? Um, so everybody who can contribute to this discussion on the... Um, costs, please submit whatever you can. Thank you. So let me go into some specific questions I have. Um, offhand, I'll be candid with my personal um, my personal um, preference is to make government offices more um, to, to provide benefits to government, government offices such that they become a more desirable position. Why? The reason I do that is because um, it has always been a dream of mine for our government employees to be well compensated, if not better compensated than the private sector, and to be provided with benefits, um, if, if possible, even more than what the private sector <laughs> gets precisely because it's difficult to compensate them with more. That is my dream, so that people take pride in being a government employee. That said, um, I would lean towards, at the very least, equalizing the benefits or providing more benefits for government employees. I'm saying that's my inclination. Whether that is what will happen, it will depend on the input that you all give me. Um, I do believe that, and this is where it would make a distinction from all those representing government, so GSIS, I would be, it would help, C CSC. What now is a distinction within government offices? Do the big government offices, can they, can they support the absence of one pregnant um, childbearing mother for three months or four months more than an LGU? Because if I lump them as government employees, they may still be different capacities, no? Mm -hmm. I make my distinction between first class, between um, fifth class municipalities and cities, because obviously the capacity of the cities to absorb, they have bigger plantillas, um, bigger budgets, is the, the absorptive capacity is better, no? So I, I'd like any kind of input you can give me. My staff will also be doing our own research, but whatever you could give is um, beneficial also to us. Um, specifically now, um, concerns Redole, no? Since, um, again, the Employee Federation is not here, I will have to course this all through you, um, ASEC. When you mention, and I do have a list of holidays and benefits that both men and women can avail of, and then there are specific ones that are, own, that are specific to women, I do acknowledge, and I, I'm reading it right now, that we have a lot of holidays. It's a concern that I've also had uh, whenever these holidays pass through the Senate um, floor. And then with respect to the work week of a woman, wherein you computed the total number of leaves that a woman has, I just need to point out that some of them, um, you need, it, it, some of them are only applicable if they fulfill certain conditions. So when you add up the number of holiday leaves, whether it's, um, it says here for male it's 3.19 months, that's holiday and paid leaves, and for female it's 7.23 months. That is because there are special conditions inherent to women that would require that they be given these leaves if the conditions are met. It's not something that we desire. It's like um, 
under the Magna Carta, there's a 60-day leave if you have a medical procedure. Well, who wants to have a medical procedure? I mean, we, it's not something a man can have. So if you, if we, I, I mean, I'm, I'm pointing this out because I do not want this table to go around and say that women can avail of 7.23 months leave if um, just like that. No, I mean, all of these, these and I'm, I'm happy that you showed it to me, but let's make it clear that the 60 days for the medical procedure assumes that you had a medical procedure. You have a myoma, you have cancer, or whatever it is. It's not something you desire. And it's not as if you'll be gallivanting and, uh, you know, so, so that is, that is serious re that's a serious reason to go on leave. The other one is Valsi, 10 days. You've been beaten up. You've been a victim of abuse. So again, this is not a holiday. You know, this is not something we're enjoying. And the other one is solo parent leave. I mean, if anyone here in this room has been a solo parent, it's not a joke. Can you please take advantage of this Women's Month and reach out to somebody in your office who is a solo parent? It is a freaking hard job to even be a dual parent. And to be a solo parent is not easy, really. So, you know, I just would be very careful with this list. It is accurate. There's nothing wrong with it. But let's be very careful on how we interpret this because it's not as if women are now having a holiday. That's precisely why we have these kind of hearings. Um, so on that note, um, yes, um, it is a problem, and you should go to the appropriate committee if you feel that we have too many holidays. By all means, um, file the appropriate um, concerns and, and lobby for this. But we cannot take this out of a leave that is specifically intended for a mother to use on her child. This goes directly into the welfare and the future of this child. If this child is malnourished for life, these are, these are going to be your underemployed, your low-skilled uh, workers of the future. And meanwhile, even before that future happens, these are going to be the mothers who will be going on perennial um, um, excuse or unexcused leave to attend to that sickly child. So this is something that I want all employers here, whether you're GSIS or SSS, because again, unfortunately, uh, the Employers Federation did not choose to grace this event and did not feel that this discussion is important enough to hear this, no? But um, I appreciate that you all can hear this now from my mouth, and then later on we'll ask for more feedback. But these are the very women who will be absent taking care of that sickly child which thankfully, and I have at present at least three breastfeeding mothers at present in my office. Um, my personal assistant who literally wakes me up in the morning and no longer takes me to my door front at night because she's now a mother is breastfeeding into her seven, how many months, six? Eight months. Eight months. And uh, if we prolong this um, hearing, you will see one or two mothers bringing out their breastfeeding cloak and they will start expressing their milk in the middle of our hearing. Because this is the work environment that we have created. It is a choice that we make. It is a choice that I make that, and I'll be very candid here, everybody in my office, it was my birthday over the weekend and they played, we played this game where I'm supposed to guess things or people associated with me. And the game was, um, so I'm supposed to ask, is it a person? Is it a thing, is it whatever? And at some point, I realized it was a person and I said, is she your boss? Is she supposed to be here in this party? Because the boss, three of, three of my, my senior officers were somewhere else dealing with another problem instead of being at my birthday party. And I was thinking it was one of them. So I said, is, it, is she supposed to be here? The answer was yes. Is she my boss? Uh, is she your boss? No. So it's like, who is it? Anyway, I didn't guess it, it was Claire. <laughs> And I said, oh, it should be my boss. <laughs> but my point is that despite the fact that my boss, um, you know, she runs my life, I have to make the adjustment because she's breastfeeding. I make that adjustment. And that is the way it's supposed to be. Because historically, we did not adjust to women. And that is why women belatedly come into the workforce, because they, had, they could not manage. And in countries that are more progressive, and I, I will not be, I will not mince word, yes, more progressive than we are, they make these adjustments for women. 
So I'm glad that there are a lot of men in this hearing because you need to hear this. They make adjustments for women. I was in Japan uh, on a visit by the Southeast Asian parliamentarians to Japan to exchange ideas. And one of the key, um, key programs of Prime Minister Abe is to support women in the workforce. He said the one untapped resource that they still have room to grow is women. And the whole program there was how to make life of women in the workforce more comfortable, more daycares, more maternity leave, more support. That's what it was all about. So I go back to my earlier statement that I am not oblivious to the concerns of employers. That is a fact. But we must still all take that position that to really engage women, to make them, not for our pride, not just for our personal growth, but for, to allow women to contribute to society to the maximum of their capabilities, we must make those adjustments. And you must speak to the employers. You must be forceful in helping them understand this. If you can, unfortunately, I don't have all the time in the world to sit around and wait for the resource persons I invite to decide to come to my hearing. I don't know if I'm going to have another hearing for them. I may not. And so that falls on your shoulders to try to help them understand that this is going to happen with or without them. And what I'd like to get is some kind of input if there is a need to differentiate. I'd like not to, but I'd like to somehow have a better understanding of the different absorptive capacities of those in different sectors. Now, like as we, somebody here mentioned, um, or was it you? Small, medium, large scale. I would like the large scale to go up to six months. Um, I have, you will be happy to note that um, my office has started contacting on our own. Um, I'm allowed, I'm allowed to discuss. Yeah. Um, the current practices of various employers. So, so we set the bar. And um, later on, again, I'll go back to UNICEF, ILO, PCW, if you have any, the, any some examples you want to share. But within the Philippines, um, I've spoken to Nestle and HSBC, just because they were companies that I have easy access to HR2, not for any other reason. And um, to put on record, um, for, HS, for, for Nestle, um, for, for those who are not, for those who do not have this data on their fingertips, okay? The current practice is 60 days, uh, regular, normal delivery, and 78 um, cesarean, okay? What Nestle offers is two weeks before delivery. I freaking work till the day I gave birth. So on this note alone, this sets such a great practice. I guess two weeks before due date. No, you never really know your due date. And three months after. So that's three and a half months, which is basically the 14 weeks, no? Um, Ms. Ardania, no? that, that, that's 14 weeks, which conf, conf, conforms with the ILO standard, which for the life of me, I do not understand why we did not um, ratify. I will have to ask DFA because strangely, the Philippines is usually at the forefront of ratifying these things. So I find this as an affront to women that we did not ratify this. How old is this convention? Um, it's a revised convention already. There's an older version in the 1950s, which the mm -hmm. Philippines also did not ratify. Maybe it's really because of the maternity leave duration. But that, that really saddens now. me mm -hmm. because we've always been in the forefront of um, prog progressive legislation, even with respect to women. Yes. We've even signed legislation that required us to come up with reproductive health policies, even though it internally it took us many years. But we've signed such convention yes. so this must have been dictated by 1950s policy the 1950s yes it's already 14 weeks actually and then yeah, the revised really one sad. is uh, was passed in 2000 okay mm -hmm. um anyway moving on now um for nestle um mm -hmm. from normal delivery Yeah, so I was just trying to, I'm just trying to keep this short. The other 
um, benefit, which I think is interesting to note, is that they provide, they allow an additional three months without pay. I think that is significant because later on I will ask UNICEF or maybe ILO now. Um, I am aware, and if, if you'd like to add to this discussion, that in many other countries, particularly the Nordic, the Scandinavian countries, and um, a few others, they're very liberal with extended leaves with no pay. So again, that's something that uh, I would ask you to go back to the private sector. This at least um, doesn't put a burden on the financial burden. It, do, it is a managerial burden because I, I also run a, a business and you know it does require some managerial um, decisions you know, on how to move around employees because you do not have to pay them, but uh, you have to hold their slot for them. So, and it's, it's not easy to get temporary work for a limited period, but it can be done, it can be done, that's the point. So I don't know if any of you have anything to add here. I just know because I actually had this discussion with the, um, the Crown Princess of uh, Norway on um, maternity benefits when I met her with Melinda Gates and uh, yeah, we had a very interesting discussion on, on how it took a lot, of, a lot of, there was resistance in the beginning, but eventually this is their practice. Yes. Just one note, actually, because we, it, in, an, in the convention, it's recommended that it's for 14 weeks. And an additional um, provision there is that the benefit shall not be less than two, two thirds of the women's earnings. Okay. So um, the proposed bill right now um, can be extended to 14 weeks, but the last four weeks uh, is being recommended as um, unpaid. So I, I, I'm happy no, no, that I, I, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm happy that you pointed that out mm. because I, I will ensure that we conform with that ILO mm. convention. So at the very least, um, we're looking at three and a half months and then any additional can still be um, yep. discussed if, you know, again, probably with, with the option of uh, not having any, it being an unpaid leave. making sure that there's really provision for daily breaks because of the requirement for a full six months of breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding. So if, if the bill can be strengthened in that regard to make sure that there are breastfeeding or lactation stations in the companies. Yes. Um, well, that law has been there and we had hoped that uh, Dole will be helping us with that. In fact, CSE, I'm glad you're here. Could you please take note of how many government offices actually have a lactation room? Um, if you're not familiar, may I invite all of you? I think we will, we will end before one o'clock, so can I invite everyone? I have another hearing at one, but it would be nice if I could have lunch. So if I can invite all of you to walk with me to our lactation room so that you can at least see it for those of you who haven't. Um, it doesn't require much, and I would appreciate it if you could come with me. Um, but not, not right now. I mean, we'll still, we'll still discuss for another maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then those of you who, who will um, accompany uh, my, me and my staff to, to take a look at the room so that kayo po sa CSC, baka you could um, try to ensure that this law is complied with because that, that law has been, I think, it, to, uh, 2008, ang ating breastfeeding. Yeah? 2009, so it's been a while. And actually, I really intended for this to be progressive so that we don't dump on the employers and people all these things at the same time. Ideally, by the time I'm introducing the maternity benefits in terms of financial benefits and the, um, the um, prolonged leave, there's already a deeper understanding of uh, that, that need to support women who are breastfeeding. If you can't even support in your workplace a woman who needs to take 20 minutes to pump their milk, how can they support somebody who will go on extended leave for a month or two months? That's the difficulty that we face and we need a lot of uh, education and um, awareness campaigns from our group. So uh, maybe we can also look into our um, associations other than the employer federation who can um, help us with this because you will need to educate people on this. Did you want to say something? Yes. 
Uh, Honorable Chair, w would you allow me to inquire on the Vietnam model? Of course. Ma'am, uh, I, 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 I just, here just a that query on share. the Vietnam. Yeah. And it's basically a six month, um, six month period where there is social service and you said, what was it? Social pension service fund. and pension fund would be paying for, would you know if it's a full package or because you mentioned ILO is at least two thirds. So, okay, yeah. Uh, I think it's 80%. 80%, okay. Yeah. And yeah, anyway, let, if we could look at it because um, whether, you know, it's 80% across the board or 100% in the beginning and then um, none, because, because a lot of these countries that I ha we have um, will not provide additional benefits after a certain amount of time. And there's no problem with that. Um, you know, again, it's, it's where we come in and acknowledge that there's a business to be run, but it's giving these women the opportunity to come back. That's really what we're looking at. That I think is the most significant, yes. Well, thank you, Senator. Um, I think the, the, the Scandinavian experience uh, has been that, uh, from the country I'm from, Sweden, we have uh, nine months uh, paid maternity leave, but we have uh, the law uh, stipulates two months, uh, sorry, two years of uh, possible maternity or paternity leave. Uh, but, uh, and, and so uh, the argument has been, I know, in, in our parliament that if the state cannot provide uh, daycare for small babies. We should also not force mothers to go back to work because there's no one to take care of the children. Uh, and in a society like the Philippines where more and more single mothers uh, uh, have babies, where uh, the nuclear family is becoming more and more common and not sort of extended grandma, grandpa family, um, it's going to be increasingly difficult for parents to find someone to take care of their baby, as also the costs for, day, for baby care or for child care is going to increase. Uh, so maybe uh, the Senate could then consider actually looking into if there's not financial uh, grounds or financial support for longer than four months, but at least allow women to take unpaid leave which would give them the possibility then to breastfeed for its for six months, at least have the choice. I remember the other question I wanted to ask um, our, well, PCW, UNICEF, and ILO. Um, this has to do, it's related to this bill, but it also came up in uh, the bill that is on the floor on age discrimination. Um, do you have data on the maternity benefit leave programs, policies of airlines in other countries. Does anybody have this? Can anybody, but can, you, can we try to get that? Because that's very important to me because that actually came up also during um, the Senate debates. No? I was asked specifically um, how would this affect um, the industry and uh, I said they're women, they need their maternity leave regardless of what their, their um, work is. Uh, and if they are in a situation where their being there is unsafe, then, well, I'm talking about maternity, but that, that, particularly, that particular topic was gender-based. Gender but um, I've heard of extreme cases where women who get pregnant are actually terminated uh, in the industry and because of a lot of outsourcing that's going on, this becomes a problem. So I would really appreciate um, further information on this because if I need to carve it out in the bill, I will. Um, so I think, I think that, that wraps it up. Um, what I would like to do is um, probably my team will either have a TWG or a um, pocket meetings with some of you and definitely one with labor. Um, sana nga yung CSE, you can also give us feedback um, because I do intend to pass this bill. Again, as I said, it's just a question of what is that, um, what is that comfort zone that we can find. Again, um, reassure the industry that uh, 
I am not oblivious to the concerns, as no less than um, the UNICEF representative said, you know, there are ways to do this. But without their input, I will, I will maximize this in whatever way in favor of women because they don't even bother to give their input. Um, I'm not irresponsible though, and so I will work with Dole and help ask you to help me find that middle ground. But what I would like to leave all of you with is this um, thought. As we consider now all the options laid before us in terms of keeping maternity benefits as is or going as far as six months benefit, the question is how much is society willing to adjust, to accommodate women in the workplace, and not because it, an, it is an accommodation for, their, for as I said, personal, personal gratification to be able to work, but as an economy, as a, as a people move, moving forward, allowing women to participate fully in the workforce. That is the question that we have to ask ourselves. So when, we, when, when ASEC Aragon points out to me that uh, there may be discrimination, and were you the other one who also, who else mentioned it? One other person mentioned it, that let's be conscious of that, that because there may be discrimination against women if the employer sector feels that there's too many benefits. Seriously, everybody here, the women in this country are respected for the kind of work they do. Yes, there may be that initial thought, but women here can easily counter those initial fears with the kind of dedication they put into the work. So I've, I've had numerous discussions with, with CEOs of multinational companies, and many of them tell me that they are grooming even more women for the topmost levels, for, the, for, the, for board director seats, and there is a shortage. So they recognize women, but these women will never get to that point if even at this level when they were supervisors or junior managers, we, we cannot even give them that support. They will disappear from the workforce. And then I will continue to have these discussions with CEOs who tell me it is difficult to fill because some companies now have these requirements to have like 30% or 50% of women on their boards. And for them to fulfill that, you cannot pull out women from nothing. They have to be these women who rose from the ranks to, uh, to achieve those positions. It's the same position I have about women in leadership role in government offices. When you say that there's six out of 24 female senators, so there's no discrimination, there's no gender, there's no need to promote women, well, why are we just six then? Why not eight? Why not 10? Why not 12? Why not half? So there is, because, and, and the minute you cannot provide that equal playing field at the bottom, the women cannot rise. So that is what I need you all to keep in mind as you help me formulate this um, bill to make it more acceptable uh, to the public. Just going back to SS, I understand the concern that you have, and this is why it will go back to the private sector, because if the private sector, which I know for a fact, both the private sector and the society in general are resistant to increasing the, um, the contributions to SSS, and again, that's not my committee, I'm not really gonna make any major comments on that, then to accommodate this, somebody still has to absorb it and it will still go back to the employers. They will have to absorb it. And so um, to a certain extent, because it is not acceptable to me that there's a cap of 15,000. That will have to be absorbed. That cannot be, that, that effectively is a deterrent to taking your maternity leave. How many women who are only making 15,000 can afford not to receive that money? None. So if you go to 20,000, Man, many women will say that extra 5,000, I'd rather go to work. I can't live with this 5,000. Unless they, and unless they have a breastfeeding culture, that 5,000 will just go to buying formula <coughs> milk. So it's a vicious, it's a horrible vicious cycle. So yeah, as I said, um, I can sit down and educate you more on this, but it is, it is a process that we need to go through to, to, to truly understand. So thank you, take your time, um, eat. I have to do an interview on this issue. But um, for those of you who haven't seen a lactation room, please take the time to see our lactation room. Thank you. Thank you.